Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. So, so the lyrics, it says, truth is time to stop playing these games. We need a word for the people's pain. So, Lord, speak right now. Let it fall like rain. We're desperate. We're chasing after you. No rules, no religion. I've made my decision. How many have made a decision today? See, like, like Dr. Nah has taught, she said, We're waiting, the world is waiting for a word. And the pattern that we've seen that God, how God works is he takes the word, which is a living word, and puts it to a, into a person. Come on. Yeah. So, the, so when people are crying for the word of God, God has placed a word in our hearts to be the vessel that's going to deliver that word. So my, my statement to, for you today is stop hesitating and allow God to use you to respond to a promise that he made to somebody else. He takes the living word, puts it to a person, causes that person to wake up vibrant, living. And he, oh. This is, this is when I wish I could sing. So I shout when, what, what, You know, sometimes a song becomes your prayer. What do you pray after that? Yeah. What do you pray after that? All we can do is say thank you. Yes. Th Jossie, you executed that song so well. The band, the singers, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Our hearts are filled with gratitude that we have a king who understands his people. And we can come to you boldly with all of our weaknesses, our brokenness, our woundedness. Empty, knowing that you will fill us so thank you. We bless you today in Jesus' precious name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise. Clap your hands, all you people, people of the Lord. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. See, wisdom is just knowing when to shut up, you know? How many know wisdom is just knowing when to shut up? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome. So glad to have you with us. And whether you are across the street, across the nation, or around the world, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us in our worship service this morning. Before you're seated, come on, bless three people, and you may be seated. While Dr. Nard is riding on a, on a board and you can't see, we, we want to give a shout out to some of the individuals. Wait, your microphone sounds... My microphone sounds... A little... Yeah, can we adjust that? Yeah, listen to his mic. Go ahead, talk. What do you want me to say? <laughs> oh, we're going to give a shout out to individuals from uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis, Memphis, Tennessee, and I was just in Nashville, Tennessee, so we're praying for Memphis, Tennessee. I'm, no, seriously, uh, Memphis, Tennessee is having a little rough patch uh, with this crime and everything like that, and um, the tension uh, that's 
stemming up still and remnants of what happened with the young man who got killed by the cops. So please pray for uh, Memphis, Tennessee, Corpus Christi, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Orlando, Florida, East Charlottesburg, Pennsylvania, Lawrenceville, Georgia, and Atlanta. Well, these are all people who are tuned in right now to the worship service right now. Yes. Now, how's his mic? Is, are you hearing him? Yes. Well? I think because... Oh, you all saying this to me? No, but you're, you're, you're coming through the monitors. Right. Oh, okay. All right. That might be it. As long as they hear you, because if they can't hear you, how can they believe in him whom they have not heard? <laughs> how shall they hear without a microphone? <laughs> Amen. A preacher. Praise the Lord. So you were in Nashville. Let's yes. talk about that. What were you doing in Nashville? It's been a few, few weeks uh, since you and I ministered together. Uh, what were you doing in Nashville? <laughs> There's a couple of things uh, uh, in Nashville. One, uh, meeting with, um, set up a meeting to meet with the governor's faith-based uh, commissioner and try to, because of our relationships and some of the things we have, um, we've been trying to work and network the divide. So if you're not familiar with Tennessee, Tennessee is uh, a, a very uh, red state, but there are very big pockets of blue. Is that, does that make sense? If you know what red and blue is in America. So, <laughs> because it's a, not the colors of the flag. <laughs> the you're talking Dem about? The Democrats, the Republicans, and then you know a, a, a particular people group tends to lean Democratic, and a uh, certain people group leans Republican. And so you got the, the Confederate flag still uh, in certain areas, and you got the, the hostility still happening. So we're trying to work on how to build a, uh, bridge the, the gap. That's, and that's where we started. Yes. When we decided to do this Building Bridges tour uh, in response to George Floyd, the, the uprising, all the things that were going on, especially during COVID, we targeted Tennessee. Yep. We had relationships down there that God bless us with. And that's where we decided to go. So we went into Knoxville. Yes. Dr. Bernice King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter was with us. Um, and Reverend we had Scott Hall Jackson. Heaven Hill, Scott, Scott Jackson and others. And it was a wonderful conversation. CBS uh, News covered the whole hour uh, for us. And we had a conversation about the issues at hand the deep divide, the polarization that's taking place. So we intentionally target t t targeted Tennessee because yeah. of the history, the climate. But yeah. they say it's the, uh, the uh, belt buckle for the beltway. It's the buckle for the belt, the <laughs> yes. belt buckle for the Bible belt. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Good, good. Um, and then yeah. we met with um, uh, a team from Belmont University with Dr. Greg Jones mm -hmm. and some uh, uh, individuals. And one of the things they're working on uh, is a program for mental health. And where it's, it's, uh, they're trying to set it up where it can be funded and connecting. So it's, it's, they're creating this huge hub via uh, social media as well as technology, how to connect individuals with uh, other individuals in order to have the start the conversation that they tend to lead the person to go get help. So often, especially in a community of color, we don't want to get help or we don't talk about it. That's not something you don't talk about. Right, um, and so now with mental health, seeing that there's a need for it, they have created this system, and we're working on it to develop it. It hasn't landed yet, where they create these groups, they have conversations, and encouragement to go seek, you know, help. It stems out of that, so more of a, 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 com a community of individuals that has been dealing with this, say, no, you should go get mental health. This is what I've been dealing with. Oh, for real? Wow, okay, I'm going to go get some mental health. And started creating a nice environment of encouragement coming out of that. And I want to thank uh, millennials because your generation really helped to remove the stigma associated with mental health for so many generations, especially here, because it would be something that that you knew was real, but you wouldn't talk about it, mm -hmm. right? And people wouldn't want to go help because they were ashamed uh, to even do that. So this is important. And, and also, just talk about the influence of Christian Cultural Center. You've got to understand uh, how our model has influenced uh, across the country and around the world. But the whole engagement, Christ in culture, yes. the engagement of government and creating partnerships without losing our identity and our Jesus, amen? Yep. Uh, when, you know, Jesus' ministry was not, he wasn't concerned about being contaminated because he felt that light and righteousness was greater than darkness and wickedness. 
Yep. So he carried that with him wherever he went. Amen. So um, we're working on helping them to create a partnership with the, with the governor, an office of... No, they uh, created one. So Faith-based and community yes. Oh, partnerships. Yes. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, there, and they're asking, how do we navigate these waters? How do we build these relationships without losing uh, our salvation? And I think that's, that's, that's an important question. And it's key because he's a Christian individual, but he has to interact as a representative of faith base with the, the Muslims, the Hindus, the Jew, uh, uh, Jewish people, uh, and, and not to lose his faith or get intimidated. Mm -hmm. And too often, Christians don't want to work with another religion uh, because they get intimidated. But no, you know, the biggest thing is, I know what I walk with. I know who I walk with. I know who I represent. Come on, come and on. there's no word about intimidating me. If anything, I dig deeper into the scriptures to create a better foundation to go for my foundation to go deeper so I can stand stronger and represent Christ and culture. <laughs> the kingdom of God is the dynamic activity of God throughout human history, throughout the ages. Write it down. It is bigger than the church. Mm -hmm. It is bigger than Israel. Mm -hmm. It spreads beyond that. So we cannot relegate the kingdom of God to one small space. No. The reign and rule of God, the dynamic activity of God towards redemption and transformation and judgment, uh, you know, it, 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 it spans far beyond that. Yes. And because people don't understand that, they think mm -hmm. that the kingdom of God is just what happens in these four walls, the church. Jesus talked about the kingdom where there was both good and evil in the kingdom. He talked about sowing seed in a field, and the field was not the church. The field is the world. Mm -hmm. So we have to change our understanding of the kingdom of God. And, you know, when I became a Christian, I was in the Pentecostal church, so the kingdom of God was, was the church. That was it. <laughs> you know, it's just us. You know, but Jesus is beyond just us. How many know Jesus Amen. is beyond Amen. just us? And we can't be afraid to take that out. I, I, the one statement I'll never forget that helps me walk into this uh, environment, the different environments that God has allowed me to engage in, is that uh, uh, darkness always has to yield to light. Say that again. Yeah, darkness always has to yield to light. One more time. Darkness always has to yield to light. You never see darkness try to make a comeback in the corner uh, once the light comes on. <laughs> well, think about it. We, we don't measure darkness we measure light mm -hmm. right there's no yes. darkness meter there's mm -hmm. a light meter right yeah. so uh we don't measure coal we measure heat so like cold is the absence of heat darkness mm -hmm. is the absence of light yep and when christ came the scripture says the light has entered the darkness. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about, bringing God's love, life, and light to a wounded and broken humanity. Amen. So they're talking about doing 30 for 30 yep. and, and Pastor, the Pastor's, Pastor's Summit. Summit. Just talk quickly about 30 for 30. And when we give you these things, it's for you to pray about. Mm -hmm. We want you to add these things to your prayer list because we need prayer behind all of these yes. initiatives. How many know that there are forces at work? There's a conflict. How many know mm -hmm. there's spiritual warfare going on? All right, just because it's a sunny day, the sky is blue. <laughs> All right, understand that there are forces, opposing forces at yes. work. So 30 for 30. So 30 for 30, Pastor Adam started. He um, wanted to take 30 pastors for 30 hours just to get together and hang out. One of the things that, you know, your generation uh, didn't do as much as we did, we did ministry together. Uh, you know, granted, you know, we understand why, uh, right, the dynamics of trying to navigate, you know, the theological uh, uh, nuances within your generation coming up, you know, the uh, whole um, uh, struggle on now, how does that work in Christ and culture? So we, because of the work that you have, you, you and your generation have done, it has allowed us to land in a place where now we can work together and we can operate and function together. And 30 for 30 has led us to a place where for 30 hours, we're just praying, worshiping crying free from, oh, oh is that, uh, did the usher seat that person correctly? Or, man, did the, the choir hit that right note? Or uh, how the lights are looking? Uh, is everything looking well on um, YouTube and stuff like that? No, we're together just praying and worshiping together, crying, 
and, and being refreshed and refueled. You said crying like three times, man. Yeah, because because of the stuff that pastors carry, you don't understand, it can be so much of a burden. And if we can't find a place where we land to be able to just to talk about it and get it off our chest, it becomes at a place where we compartmentalize so much so that it's very difficult for us to be emotionally attached to certain things. So the more you compartmentalize things, the more detached you become. The more detached you become, the more robotic things happen, and you no longer move in, in a place where the Lord is just moving you. You're just moving by the beat of a particular drum. Come on, come on. Yeah, articulate. And, and that's very, very real. Pastoring is, is a calling. Mm -hmm that God anoints you. Jesus stood up in the temple. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to mm -hmm. preach the gospel to the poor, open prison doors, set at liberty those that are bound, set the captives free. If you are not anointed to do something, yeah. you're going to do it in your own strength. Yep. And chances are very high you're going to burn out. Yep. Plain and simple. And we have the reality that some were sent and some just went. <laughs> so to the went folks out there who are struggling, there are pastors who are burning out. Yep, and that's you why know. we do and, it. And, and it's not because they're not successful. No. It's because very. they haven't developed the character. Mm -hmm. You know, you can grow so fast that you don't grow the support system to support what you've grown so fast in. Yep. And when you're talking about ministry, the only thing that can support your success is character. Mm -hmm. So your gift, talents, and abilities, you've heard me say this again and again, to take you to great height, but only character can sustain. Yep. So if you don't have the support of that character, and we have people because of technology, charisma, personality, social media, they are blowing up. And you have young pastors who are pastoring 10,000, mm -hmm. 15,000 people, and they've built the church in 7 to 10 years. Yep. What took my generation 20, 30 years to do, they're doing it in 10, uh, 7 to 10 years. So what happens is they experience success so fast that they don't have the time to develop the character and wisdom necessary to support that success. So they end up burning out or walking away or yep. abandoning because they become so overwhelmed by the reality of responsibility. Beloved, I wish above all things, it's just so come on, you know the text, that you prosper and be in health even as so your soul powerful. prospers. So God wants us to flourish, but the prosperity of the soul is the only thing that can support the external prosperity, material prosperity that we can experience, and he wants us to experience in life, which leads us to this. Wait, before you go there, you said you want to just do a, a checkup on everybody's uh, Lenten experience. How's oh, your, yeah. How's your Lenten experience going? Like Lent. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's an experience. <laughs> you know, when you decide to turn something down, yes. it's always in your face. Mm -hmm. Do you notice that? When you make a decision, that's why, let me tell you something, you got to be strategic for Lent. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you, you can't, you know, say, well, oh, praise the Lord for Lent, I'm going to stop eating. <laughs> no, you ain't. Because the very thing that you decide to turn down is going to keep coming up at you, coming up at you, coming mm -hmm. up at you. And it seems like it's a plot against you. Amen? Amen? Because everybody's birthday comes out, reasons, opportunities <laughs> to engage in the very things that you decided not to engage in. So, uh, but you know, after a while, you develop a discipline. Rhythm. And, and, a, and a rhythm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You arrange your life in such a way that you can um, keep that moving. So, so far, so good. What is the Lord telling you, speaking to you right now? I mean, I'm getting personal, right? <sighs> I don't want to derail your message, so Mo that blues. might be a message. He's Mo speaking better blues? to me, Mo Better Blues. All right. That's what I'm hearing. You're All right. Gonna, we're going to unpack that. All right, good. Well, my, my uh, Lent experience is going uh, pretty well. It was a little struggle in the beginning. Um, and it's true because, it, like, the commercials come on. <laughs> I'm walking from the gym, and I'm, sm <laughs> I'm, I'm smelling the food being cooked. You know, you're getting hungry, but uh, I, what, the, my, what God has been telling me, talking to me about is just the renewing of a mind, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to help make sure that you don't go, come out of Lent thinking the same way you went into Lent. 
Yeah. That's good. So that's what, that's what I'm working on. And when I look at that text, it talks about uh, uh, not just renewing, but renovation. It's more about re the renovation of your mind. And I said, wow, this is, this is amazing because when you look at, you know, you, you start going in the house when it changed up and start opening walls and next thing you start finding stuff, right? Stuff that, stuff that termites might have done, you know, dry rot. Or how about stuff that old relationships have had with that house that have, was left behind? That's another message, right? But yeah, so renovation, we know in my mind. So that's what I'm working on. New, new construction is always easier than reconstruction. Yes. Try that. That's a principle for life. New construction is always e easier than reconstruction. Because mm -hmm. when you're reconstructing something, renovating something, in the process of renovation, you Fine discover stuff. things that you had no idea were present. Cracks in the foundation, plumbing problems, electrical problems. Mm -hmm. How many know what I'm talking about? And translate that into relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's very real. So, yeah, be transformed by the renewing, renewing the renovation of your mind. Yes. And that's why it's a challenge. You know, uh, when Adam and Eve came, you know, God created Adam and Eve and put them here. He, they had what is called infused knowledge. Mm -hmm. Infused knowledge. God gave them a certain degree of knowledge to start with. We start with nothing and we learn and grow over time. And how we learn, the context in which we learn, the forces at play in our learning experience really influence how we learn and how we apply what we learn. So it's a different scenario for us. Lent is not about um, doing without. It's about doing with. Yeah. In ways that you Amen. haven't had to do with before. Mm -hmm. See? So if you remove something, now what you've got left is what you've got to work with. Yeah. So you have to think differently working with what you've got left as opposed to what you had when you didn't separate something out. So it's a challenging place to be and it's a wonderful yeah. opportunity and experience. And, and let me just say this to you. Do not accept the devil's lie that if you fall and make a mistake during Lent, Lent is over. <laughs> it's not over until Good Friday, <laughs> which means you, are, you repent and, go back. and keep going. Amen? Don't use it as an excuse. Oh, well, I'm out. No, you're not. Mm -mm. It's a long-term uh, <laughs> commitment, praise the Lord. So, what else? That's it. So, Mil Lent, We get to catch up uh, when you're here. So, let me, let me Mo talk. Better Blues. Mo Better Blues. All right. And, and, I, and I got text messages saying, Pastor, please finish that. <laughs> Mo Better Blues. How many of you were here last week? So you know I ended the service with Mo Better Blues. And this happened because I, I was uh, on our radio broadcast, The Reverend Rabbi. We were interviewing uh, Ernie Onassis, who's been a longtime journalist. You may have seen him on television. And he, we, we, we all of a sudden got into a conversation about purpose and you know this this came up and I said well wait a minute that's interesting a whole idea behind more our our desire we want three things we want right three things we want we want more and I call it the blues, because of the reality of these things. I was at um, a meeting yesterday, wonderful brunch with 500 men making a difference. And the mayor and I were sort of the, the not a panelist, but it was a wonderful discussion. And a young man who was interviewing us has a uh, podcast. and. We were talking about different things, different issues that come into play. And one of the things that I pointed out is that when you grow up marginalized, discriminated against, mm -hmm. disenfranchised, or experiencing that reality in a particular context, when you grow up without, all right? And we don't even have to talk about color here. 
because marginalization can take place with any community. How many know there are poor black people? <laughs> Y'all didn't know that? How many know there are poor black people? There are poor white people? There are poor Asian people? Their poverty has no respect of person or color. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important that we understand that. However, if a society is constructed in a way to empower uh, one group over another or disempower one group next to another, then that's a structural problem within the society. But when you, when you grow up marginalized and having to live and do without, when you are able to do with, you can go overboard. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. You know, Pastor Karen and I talk about, and thank you for your prayers because, you know, this month is a reality for her because she's dealing with MS. And what you saw up there, you have no idea what we have to deal with in our home. It, it, it changes the family dynamic, our responsibilities, our concern for her, and what she has to go through. And we have to keep her in good spirits because, you know, it can be frustrating. The loss of mobility, uh, living with pain all the time, it's, it's, it's a tough, tough thing uh, for her. So when we, we, would, we would have conflicts because she grew up in a home environment where she was emotionally and sometimes physically abused, bad relationship with her mom. So the slightest excuse was given not to give her gifts for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So she grew up not having that. So when we started having kids, guess who was Santa Claus? Thank you, Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> she overcompensated. She wanted to give everything that she could and, and what they wanted. I grew up different. <laughs> I grew up different. I was heavily influenced by a particular geographic location. And we did with what we had, and, you know, it was just a different mindset, even though, you know, we, we, we struggled. But it was such a deep pain inside of her that how she dealt with that pain, all right, was giving her children as much as they want. You see, I could care less <laughs> that Jordan put out sneakers that cost $300. Was, I ain't buying them. It wasn't $300 back then. It was 300 to me. <laughs> <laughs> she would go She'd come on, right? She'd buy you all the sneakers, the latest clothing. Mommy took care of us. No, I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me open my notes here. You're not I'm going to pray for you. You're your not going to win with this one. The rest of the family. I'm going to pray for all y'all. <laughs> See, he didn't have daughters, so he didn't have anybody on his side. He said, Mommy had all boys, so we're all on Mommy's side when it comes to stuff like this. <laughs> daughters. Daughters take up for their father? Oh, yeah. I'm the man in my house. When it comes to my daughter, my son's a different story, but, yeah. So your sons pay you no mind, your daughters yep. take up for you? I guess the love, I come home, daddy, are you okay, daddy? Yeah, my son, like, he just walked past me, not even acknowledged me. All I can say is, back at you. No. <laughs> so, like we were saying, <laughs> so when you don't have you want, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You want more, and that's where we begin. And, and it's, it's the reality of all of us, because it's not just more in terms of things, but self-improvement. The, the image of God, and be fruitful and multiply, is a call to better, mm -hmm. to develop, to grow, to enrich ourselves, right? But I'm talking about the kind of more where we want, we just, Look at the list of stuff that I have here. We want more money. All right? Mo, more money. I heard more money, more problems. Mm -hmm. We want more money. We want more fame, power, influence, recognition, more material things. 
And the reality is that the more you get, the more you want because it doesn't really satisfy. It leaves you empty. And, and it's, it's a progression because you start out wanting more. Say more. More. Yeah, you start out wanting more. And once you get more, you want better. So you, you want a house, mm -hmm. right? You want better living conditions. I mean, more, more, <laughs> right? <clears throat> but then when you get the house, when you get the more, you want better. You want to make the more what? Come on better so you want a better house better car better job right no we can't have a better spouse <laughs> we want better relationships we want to better what we have mm -hmm. and that's true is that a, a right progression but even when we get the better or what we think is better because sometimes what we think is better is really not better. Mm -hmm. And you don't find that out until you get it. <laughs> and now you're stuck with it. What you thought was better. I thought this was better. <laughs> I thought she, he was. It still leaves you empty and unfulfilled. It doesn't satisfy more doesn't really satisfy. Now look, is there something wrong with having more? No, absolutely not. Is there something wrong with having and desiring better? Absolutely not. It's when we think that it's going to give us meaning and purpose. Mm -hmm. It's not going to get... Next step, more, because when we get more, we want better. And when we get the better, right? That's not enough. We want what? We want to distinguish ourselves from everybody else. It's true personally. It's true in business. It's true. Let me tell you something. Churches compete to distinguish themselves between other churches. Yep. It is the spirit of comparison, not always jealousy, but that competition that's a reality of human experience and human desire. So even when we get to the place where we want to distinguish ourselves, set ourselves apart from everybody else and how many how many have honestly are thought about your own distinction mm -hmm. how many have thought about what makes you different from everybody else? in a good way yeah in a good way all right look there's nothing wrong with these things that's important let me emphasize this but they don't satisfy you and here's why because more better and distinction are driven by external validation. Mm -hmm. People will see your more, they'll see your better, they'll see your distinction, all right? They'll commend you, they'll celebrate you, all of that, right? But it doesn't satisfy the inside of you, something that transcends all this stuff. That's very, very real, folks. More better distinction and you can be you can get caught up in a in a cycle of of believing that okay it, i'm not satisfied so all i need is more all i need is better all i need is is to distinguish myself and you could spend your whole life and die empty because you never discovered meaning and purpose. What I realize as, as I move, how many know we live life on levels? Yes. We arrive in stages. Stages. We experience life in stages. And I will tell you, as I move from one level to another in life, I realize that I was also moving from quantity to quality. Yep. How many know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. See, that's when you begin to take a good look at the more, better, and distinction. When you realize that it's about meaning, it's about purpose. So now it's not having a lot of clothes. And here's the stage in between. <laughs> now you get into the brand. <laughs> now you want quality. And in our, in our world, it's all about brand, right? All right. Uh, but, but you want 
quality. And even in relationships, it's not about, you move from not having friends to having a bunch of friends to saying, I want real friends. Yeah. I want authentic relationships. I want quality relationships. This is why Jesus said that the road to life is narrow. The road to death is broad. Why? Because as you grow in life, right, there's a, your life becomes narrowed. There's a narrowing that takes place. Your relationships, the number of your relationships, the circle of your relationships gets smaller. How many realize that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you're looking for quality. You're, you're looking for something that has eternal value. You move from abundance of relationship to real, genuine relationships. I love this whole idea of authentically doing life together. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of relationships that you want. So we go through more, better, distinction, and again, there's nothing wrong with wanting more, having more, doing better, setting yourself apart. That's, that's, that's okay. It's part of the world that we live in. But what changes everything, what changes everything is when you discover purpose. Mm -hmm. That's what changes the game. Changes everything about you. Because purpose, purpose can put you in a position where these things mean a lot less to you. Because purpose transcends the material world. It's the one thing that gives you a sense of meaning. Purpose transcends the material. More better and distinction can leave you in a never-ending cycle. And you can spend your whole life chasing. Why? Because it's, it's, it's based upon what? Come on. External validation. Yep. It's based on what? External, external validation. validation. I, I was, I was going to ask because one of our timeless fundamentals is a relentless drive for progress. So how do we yes. describe progress? It's growing in grace. It's growing in the knowledge of God. We were, we were having uh, breakfast and at the table we are, the conversation came up about what is the the premier driving force in your life pastor and I reflected on that question in a different way what is the and this is important that you get this down all right because you come here to learn grow and contribute right right What is the ultimate goal of all your choices in life? What is the, see, we're starting at 30,000 feet here. <laughs> all right? What is the ultimate goal of all your choices in life? Now, you, people may give different answers to that. All right? Some will immediately say, be happy. Mm-hmm. But the problem is happiness is based upon external things. Yeah. You get caught up in the what? And isn't it true? I, you know, I, I heard someone say, you know, if I just get married, I'll be happy. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, you don't know what they're talking about here. We, we, we have an idea that if we do this, and what we mean by happy, it's, it's going to satisfy us. We're going to feel fulfilled. Amen? Amen. How many got married? <laughs> uh, don't raise your hand on this question. <laughs> Is everybody happy? <laughs> Because often you get something that you think, and, and again, when we say that, I just want to be happy. What you're saying is, I want meaning, I want satisfaction, I want fulfillment. It's not going to come from material things. You see, this is where we have the advantage called eternal life. It's only when you are freed by the eternal that you can truly enjoy the temporal. 
because eternal life elevates you above all this stuff and once you're elevated above it and you're free from it and no longer a slave to it now you can have it and enjoy it yeah And that's what eternal life brings. Eternal life is not just about living forever. It's a state of mind. It's a way of living and thinking and being that elevates you and liberates you from all the stuff that the devil uses to entrap you. Remember, sin promises to serve and please, but only desires to enslave and dominate. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing how many people who are spiritually and morally blind, oblivious to the powers of evil and the seduction of sin. Yeah. Oblivious to it. Because it, it comes so nicely packaged mm -hmm. to get you to think that it will deliver something that it really can't deliver. Mm -hmm. That's why the devil uses deception. So it's not until you are true. That's why Jesus said, if the, if the Son sets you free, yeah. come on, you know the text, right? Free, free indeed. If the Son sets you free, you are free, free indeed. indeed. He said, I am the truth. So if the truth sets you free, then you are free indeed. The truth about more, better, and distinction. The truth about material possession, power, and influence. Jesus was always being tempted. In fact, the temptation was about power, economic power, political power, spiritual power. And he turned it all down. How many read of the temptations of Jesus in the wilderness? Right. Those are all symbolic of the kinds of power that this world offers us. And you can't be trusted with power if you're controlled by power. Yeah. It's only people who are free from power who can be entrusted with power. Mm -hmm. And if you want to find out the character of an individual, give them power. Yep. So eternal life liberates us. So I can enjoy material things, a fine restaurant, a nice car, because they don't control me. They don't have me. I'm not enslaved to these things. I can let them go. I mean, understand what I'm talking about here. Amen. That's the beauty of this, folks. So purpose. And I think that we need to spend some time. And, and let me give you a statement, all right? It's critical to balance the desire for improvement with a recognition of the value of meaning and purpose. We have to balance. There's nothing wrong with improvement. Again, nothing wrong with more, better, and distinction. It's when it controls us. It's when it puts us on this, on this never-ending cycle that we're never satisfied and we keep thinking that that's all we need. More better distinction meaning and purpose is what it's all about folks meaning and purpose does your life have meaning is there a sense of purpose behind what you're doing so when the question was presented to me all right what is the ultimate goal the ultimate goal of every choice you make in life there was only one answer for me to please god because if pleasing God is the ultimate, then all the choices that I make in life will be governed by what? Pleasing God. Pleasing. Does it please God? What I'm about to get into, what I'm about to do, what I'm about to spend my time, my talent, my energy, my influence on, will it please God? And that's not as easy as it sounds. Because you have to know and grow in what pleases God and what doesn't because everything doesn't please God. Mm -hmm. It can seem good. Come on, in the garden, let's start there. Eve was convinced after she was tricked that what God forbid her to participate in was what? Good mm -hmm. for food. It was 
good to make her wise. Think about it. Good for food. She didn't need any food. <laughs> she had every tree in the garden, every plant, every, the whole garden was her, except that one restriction. Why would that make the difference for her? She wasn't satisfied with what she had. She wanted what? More. She wanted more. And that's how the devil, he, it just, you see, when you don't value what you have, mm -hmm. all right, it'll be devalued to you. You won't appreciate it, and it'll push you to seek something else. Yep. There's, look, there's nothing wrong with, with improving yourself in life. That's important. Here's a, here's a statement. Learn to be happy with what you have mm -hmm. while you pursue what you want. Yep. Young kids that say, I, I don't want to work at McDonald's. You ain't, you, you broke. You ain't got a dime in your pocket. <laughs> and you got a problem with flipping hamburgers? That's not the rest of your life. They actually got good benefits. <laughs> turn, turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking about somebody you know. <laughs> Purpose changes everything. Mm -hmm. How many have had that encounter with purpose and it changed your life? Yeah. It, 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 it made you different. It made you different. Purpose is the big why. All right? Because at the core, at its core, purpose is simply a search for meaning, for value. It's a desire to understand why we're here, why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. And when purpose comes into your life, here's some of the fruit of purpose. Focus. When you are being driven by purpose, when you are purpose-driven and leading Rick Warren's, the title of Rick Warren's book, A Purpose-Driven Life, when you are leading a purpose-driven life, you tend to be more, more focused. Yep. It gives you direction. Because you can't waste time all over the place. Now, how many know some people who are just all over the place? You've got to still them in order to have a conversation with them because they're just all over the place. Purpose gives you focus. Turn your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Yeah. Purpose gives you focus. Purpose. So focus comes from purpose. The fruit of purpose is focus. Another word, the fruit of purpose, order. Order. Purpose will order your life. Mm -hmm. It will force you to prioritize your life. It will force you to put in order what's most important and what's not important. It helps prioritize your goals, your decision making, and it will force you to align with your values. So what words do we have? What's the fruit of purpose? Focus. Focus. What's another one? Come on. Order. order. Fulfillment. 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 Because when you have purpose, it leads to a greater sense of happiness. Mm -hmm. Because your life is worth something. You feel like, this is why I'm here. It's different. Different. Another fruit of purpose is community. Because purpose will connect you with people of like purpose. Yep. People of like mind. And that creates community. That creates community. And that's impor important. We learn, we're here to learn, grow, and contribute, right? It provides us with a sense of belonging and connection when you are in your purpose. It brings the right people into your life and screens out the wrong people. <laughs> how many know how important that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because when you're driven by purpose, you're conscious of how much time you've got. You become more efficient in the use of your resources when you are driven by purpose. Here's another fruit of purpose. I'm not going to give you all of them, but control. Control. Let me tell you something. A lot of our stress is because we don't feel in control of our lives. When you feel like your life has gotten away from you and things are all over the place and crazy, 
you get stressed out. How many know that stress? Mm -hmm. When your finances have gone wild, your relationships have gone crazy. I mean, your life is just out of order. That is stress. And I will tell you, the number one cause for the type of sickness and disease that we're experiencing in our world today is because of one word, stress. Mm -hmm. I had no idea how much was related, related to stress. Stress. And what's stressing you? Because remember the principle, what the mind cannot contain, it will impose on the body. What the mind cannot contain, it will impose on the body. So purpose gives us a sense of control, agency over our lives. Because when we have a clear understanding of what we want to achieve, why we want to achieve it, we're more motivated to take action. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, purpose-driven people are more motivated than people who don't know their purpose. And then those people who are not as driven gets upset with that person who is more purpose-driven. Oh, say that again. <laughs> it's true. I said those people who aren't as driven gets upset with those people who are more purpose-driven. Yeah. People who are purpose-driven annoy people who are not. Yep. How many know we purpose-driven folks annoy some people? They get mad at us. Can't you just take a break? Yep. <laughs> Why you got to always have it in order all together? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I will tell you, in, in a world that's driven by more, better, and distinction, right? Sometimes your purpose is antithetic to those things. Yeah. And people who don't understand that will look at you and say, well, you take, you take for instance, in, in our staff, right? We, we've got a staff of about 70 people, 72 people who are full-time mm -hmm. employees of CCC. I'm not talking about our volunteers, you know. But I cannot tell you how many times some of our staff members have to deal with critics and comments from their friends. Oh, you work for a church? Why don't you get a real job? <laughs> oh, yeah. People can, who are driven by this stuff, external validation, all right, they can criticize you. You take someone who's working with the homeless mm -hmm. or on the mission field, and they're just so satisfied and happy in what they're doing. And you can tell when they're talking about it because they're all upbeat and excited. And, 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 and people who are driven by external validation and accumulation of things and power and influence look at them and say, oh, poor child. <laughs> And if, and if the pur purpose-driven person buys into that, they'll leave purpose and start, and they'll get on this merry-go-round, come on, and wonder why they feel so empty. Yeah. Because what satisfies and fulfills one person doesn't necessarily satisfy and fulfills another person. And thank God that we have people who are excited about working with the homeless. Yes. Do you want to work with them? Look at you, you won't e they won't even answer. Did you see that? They were, well, you know, Pastor, praise the Lord. How many, and you can raise your hand at this, you won't, all right? How many are aware that there are jobs you just don't want to do? Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? Guy made a whole show and a brand out of dirty jobs. Yep. <laughs> what are dirty jobs? Jobs that most people Won't do. don't want to do. And yet, he's passionate about it, loves it. There are people do, and see, that's why you can't look down on what other people do. <laughs> Acknowledge their love for what they're doing and realize, wow, they're in their purpose. Encourage them, motivate them, support them, love them. Don't try to convert them to something that's going to leave them empty. Yep. Purpose. And, and I th think that's why joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Ah, come on. And not happiness. Because it's internal. Yep, joy is the internal expression. Internal. So you can be joy. Because what happens is when you hit a, a point in your life when you're struggling and wrestling, you won't be happy, but you still can have joy. Right? Because happiness is associated with external, but internally, you can still be joyful 
in, 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 in the middle of a storm. You can still be joyful in the middle of a situation. You can be joyful in the middle of heartache and heart pain and all that other stuff. You can be, still be joyful because you're eating from the fruit of the Spirit. Excellent. Excellent. Because, it, because you don't need the external validation. No. No. You know? See, let me tell you something. The greatest validation that you can ever receive is from God. Yep. Because He's consistent. He's not going to change up on you. How many know people will change up on you? Yes. How many have ever experienced people changing yes. up on you? Mm-hmm. That's a reality. That's a reality. So purpose, pur and here's why purpose is tough, all right? Because I talk about this, all right? Because the search for purpose is not always easy. It's true. Because there are people who are saying, what, what was my purpose? All right? The discovery of purpose requires introspection, self examination, self-reflection, a willingness to stop and explore your own values, your own beliefs. See, people who are shallow struggle with purpose because they don't want to take, to take the time to examine themselves. I'm always conscious of what I'm saying and wondering why did I say that. Mm -hmm. I'm conscious of what I do and wondering why did I do that. I'm conscious of my reactions as well as my responses to external stimuli throughout the day. And at the end of the day, I'm reflecting back on that day and how I conducted myself so I could make changes. You see, discovering purpose takes work. Yes. And most people don't want to work. work. They don't want to put in the time. And it can be a lifelong journey. And here's why. Because our sense of purpose may change over time. Purpose is not static. It's dynamic. Mm -hmm. What you feel purposeful about in your 20s may change in your 30s, in your 40s, in your 50s. Why? Because you continue to grow, gain more knowledge, experience, understanding. You advance in life. You move from one level to another. But purpose is the only thing that will give you a sense of satisfaction. Ecclesiastes, I think it's 3.11 in the Amplified Bible, if we can put that up there. Where is it? Do we have it? He has made everything beautiful. Talking about God. God has done what? He's made everything what? And appropriate in its time. And of course, this chapter opens up with there's a time and a season mm -hmm. for every purpose under heaven. How many know that you are a purpose of God? Mm -hmm. Listen to what I just said. I didn't say you have purpose. Listen to what I just said. You are a purpose. Which means that God has already purposed something in you. And that's why he's gifted you with certain talents and abilities. Designed you to be the way you are. Your personality. Everything about you is related to the purpose that you are. You discover that purpose at the intersection where those gift, talents, and abilities that God has given you meets a human need because that's the place of satisfaction. Now, let me just say this to you while you're pursuing purpose. It doesn't mean that the pursuit of your purpose is going to pay the rent. <laughs> what satisfies you and fulfills you may not pay your bills. So you still need a job. Or that job helps lead you to your purpose. You might, your, your purpose might need finances. Might? <laughs> it definitely will. And, and you know how people say, well, I'm in pursuit of purpose. Uh, yeah, but the rent's due. <laughs> the light's out. The phone's cut off. Optimum called. <laughs> I'm not saying what I'm talking about. You got to make that distinction. It'd be time warning out here. <laughs> That's right. I forget, I forget, forget where we are. Hey, but notice what it says uh, in, in this passage. It, it, we can get it back up there. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. He has also planted eternity. What, what do we mean by eternity? A sense of what? Divine, Divine purpose. purpose. In the human heart, a mysterious 
Come on. Longing, which, come on. Nothing, Nothing under the sun, that means in the earth realm, can satisfy except who? Come on. God. Yet man cannot fathom or comprehend, grasp what God has done, his overall plan from the beginning. So God has implanted something inside of you deep and profound and he wants you to discover it and then apply it because he's placed you here to make a difference god said i know how to change the world i'm going to put a.r bernard in it <laughs> i'm going to put jamal bernard in it i'm going to put bb winans in it i'm going to put dawn walker in it i'm going to you know, did you hear what i just said I'm going to put my word in them, as Pastor Jamal said in the beginning, and because he sent his word to heal us and deliver us from our destruction, but that word needs a body. Yeah. So he takes his word, puts it in the body, in a human heart. I mentioned this yesterday in, 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 in the interview with, 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 with the mayor, Mayor Adam. When the scripture, well, back up. If I had a Bible, I, I would hold it. When it's on the paper, it's just text. But when it leaves the paper and enters the human mind and the human heart and transforms that individual, it becomes an answer to the problems in society. Yep. How many understand what I'm talking about? For God so loved the world that he sent his word, gave it a body. And when that word was in that body, we beheld the glory and power of that word to change the world in which we live. You're an answer. You are one of God's answers to what's wrong with this world. Yeah. The devil wants to keep you part of the problem. <laughs> God wants you to be the answer. Yep. We've got to stop here. Did y'all get anything out of that today? Purpose. So, if you are having the Mo Better Blues, it's because you're stuck in that cycle, never being satisfied because you don't understand, you have not embraced the power of purpose. Let's close our eyes. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Well, we have the minister. You want me to go into prayer first? Change All right. All right. Let's go to the Lord of Prayer. See, th this is one of the things what Dr. Art spoke about is one of the reasons why I have landed on Christianity. See, an atheist can't be able to explain this type of purpose, this meaning. Because if you come from a glue, a goo, big goo, then there's no sense of purpose. But if we're created, then there's a reason why we're created and therefore we can find purpose. Mm. So for me, Christianity makes the most sense when it comes to getting out of this cycle of the Mo' Better Blues. When it comes to the, the desire to say, okay, why am I here? Christianity makes the most sense. So Lord, we thank you for the word that was breathed in the beginning. Mm. The word that formed and shape this thing called the world. But Lord, we say thank you for the dynamic relationship that you have entered with the human person mm. through the word called Jesus Christ. We say thank you for, for really shining a light because you care so much about us that you have desired for us to come about up out of a situation the situation of the cycles of Mo Better Blues. Understand that there's more to this life than just money. There's more to this thing called life than just a fancy car. There's more to this thing called life. And Lord, we pray for a revelation knowledge on an understanding of what is our purpose at this current place we are in our life. Lord, what is it that you have desired for us to do to respond to the needs 
of humanity. Lord, what is it that we need to do to be the solution and not the problem? So we pray for a divine intervention of understanding. Yes, hallelujah. We pray for an anointing of comprehension. For you are a good God, a wonderful God, and we say, have your way right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Come on, give God a good hand, clap offering. When God cut covenant with Abraham, he said these words to Abraham, I am your exceeding great reward. Did you hear that? That means I'm all you need. Yeah. If you got me, you've got everything you need for whatever you want to achieve. How many believe that? That Christ is all we need. Amen. Let's all stand. Elder P, you don't get off that easy. Elder Point is going to lead us in prayer because it begins with a relationship with Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you're in this house today and you don't have your own personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, or if you're watching via the internet through YouTube or Facebook or whatever medium you are utilizing, God is speaking to you today. Here's the conclusion of the whole matter. It's the duty of man to fear God and to keep his commandments. But it's not possible to do that without a relationship with him that is found through Jesus Christ. And getting saved doesn't mean that you won't have any problems, you won't have any issues, that you won't have any struggles. I can tell you today from my own personal experience, I can testify like David. I was once young, and now I'm an AARP card carrier. <laughs> but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed out begging for bread. And if you know God is speaking to you today, we'd like to pray with you. If you just lift your hand where you are, you're saying, that's me, Elder Pointer. This word has been bouncing off of me all service long. God has been speaking to my heart. He's been calling me. Even in this mass auditorium, God's been calling me. He's been speaking to me, telling me that I have a purpose. I didn't know my purpose. I, I didn't understand what God was saying. I didn't even know why I was here. But now I'm clearly coming to understand. God has desired me to be in his household of faith. You lifted your hand. Praise God. Just step out of your seat and come down to the altar so we can pray together. Come on. If you're on the balcony, just come down quickly. God has orchestrated this day for you. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all, give God praise and pray as they come. Hallelujah. You are special. You are special to the heart of God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray in a moment, but you know, I feel somebody struggling. I feel somebody struggling. You know that you should be here right now and something is causing you to resist. I want you to know that is nobody but that guy. Not, not, not God, not Jesus. It, it's that other guy who wants to stop you from realizing and experiencing what God has ordained for you. So, come on right now. We're going to give you a moment to come. They're still coming, y'all. Just give God praise. Hallelujah. Sometimes it takes a moment to break the yoke. 
Just keep praying. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Eternity begins for you right now. Right now. And God is going to enter into your life and into your heart. He says it's a very simple thing. If you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, the scripture says, Thou shalt be saved. Nothing on earth can block it, nothing on earth can stop it. Nothing that has been and nothing that can come can keep you from having what God has ordained to be yours today. That's a relationship with him and to be able to walk into your purpose. Hallelujah. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Say, Father, I thank you for your love that has surpassed all human understanding you sought me in spite of myself and I am here today to respond to that love to open my heart and to invite you in forgive me of all my wrong of all my sins of all my transgressions and wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ Cleanse me from head to toe. Lord, take my mind as I am refreshing it in your presence. Let your Holy Spirit birth in me this new life. I submit to you this day in Jesus' name. And everybody in agreement say, come on, give God a praise and a hand clap. If you prayed that prayer via the internet, just put in the chat, I received Jesus today. There's a number on the screen that you can call or text, and we will get information into your hands to help you. This is the beginning of a journey. Amen? Go with God in Jesus' name. Give God a praise as they go back to this. Amen, amen. Welcome, welcome to the kingdom. Welcome to the kingdom. For those that this is your first time making that, as you walk back, just let me let you know, this thing called Christianity is not easy, but it's possible. It's possible with a community of believers. So if you have not found yourself in a church, if you're watching, please find yourself in a church. Of course, CCC is, you know, one of the if I must say, one of the best spots to be in. But if this is too large a facility and you want something intimate, please find yourself a church. Even though I think CCC is very intimate, even though as large as it is. <laughs> but find yourself a church. All right, you don't grow in isolation, you grow in community. So you need to find a community of believers, amen? Well, did you enjoy service today? Did you receive something today? So as we leave this place with never God's presence, Jesus is Lord, period. We believe it, we proclaim it, and we're seeing it come to pass. God bless and enjoy the rest of your week. Family, thank you so much for watching CCC's YouTube channel. If you feel what you just experienced impacted your life in any way, we encourage you to like, subscribe, and share this video with others so we can fulfill our mission in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. We welcome you to check out some of our other videos. Also, make sure to click the notification bell so you are the first to know when we post a new one. Our praise and worship team brings us a powerful and dynamic live worship experience every Sunday. And trust me and Cameron when I say, you do not want to miss it. Streaming times are in the description box below. And if you are looking for any other information about what's happening here at CCC, visit www.cccinfo.org. 
We hope to see you next Sunday, but for now, continue to have a blessed week in the Lord.